I want you to stand up, hold your Bible high up in the air, and uh, say this out loud with me. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word. I believe his word. And I live by his word. Christ is my master. And to him, I am an absolute surrender in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go in our Bibles this morning to John, the 16th chapter. About two Sundays ago, we just started talking a little bit about faith just to help us rediscover uh, uh, this walk of faith that we have been called to live and operate in. And so I'm just going to continue on that this morning. And I want to talk to us this morning on faith that dominates circumstances. Faith that dominates circumstances. So let's begin in John chapter 16 and verse 33 where Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So Jesus said, look, I'm saying all these things to you so that in me you may have peace. You can come to a place in him where you can have peace. Doesn't matter what happens in the world. You are at peace because you are in him. Because of his words. So these, is, these things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. And he said, in the world you will have tribulations. So in the world you are bound to have difficulties. You are going to face challenges. You are going to face the storms of life. You are going to have all the difficulties coming against you. In the world you will have tribulation. But he said, be happy, be of good cheer. He said, I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome, he's conquered, he has triumphed over, he's gained the mastery over, uh, over the world. He said, I have conquered the world, be of good cheer. Now John, who's the beloved disciple, who wrote this gospel of John. Later on, he wrote the epistle of John. So if you'll go with me to the epistle of John, 1 John, chapter 5. And we're going to see what John says here in 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 and 4. 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 and 4. So John declared that Jesus has overcome the world in John 16, verse 33. Now we go to 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 and 4, and here's what John says. In verse 1 he says, Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Whoever, anyone who believes that Jesus is the Messiah, he is the sent one, he says, you are born of God. So why don't we just say this together? I am born of God. Right? So you believe that Jesus is the Messiah. He says, you are born of God. So you are born of God. God's given birth to you, so to speak. Meaning, you've got the life and the nature of God inside you. You've inherited from him. You're born of God. You, God's given birth to you, so to speak. But then he has something to say about you and I who've been born of God. Verse 4. He says, whoever, meaning it's all inclusive, everyone. Verse 4. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. Is that you? Is that you he's talking about? Yes or no? Yes, he's talking about you. He says, whoever is born of God. Who is born of God? The ones who believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Messiah, they are born of God. And then he says in verse 4, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. So let's say this together. I overcome the world. 
I am an overcomer. That's the word of God. It says, whoever, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. Now, in John's mind, he already told us, quoting Jesus, he said, in the world, you will have tribulation. In the world, you will face challenges. You will face difficulties. You will face the storms of life. But he said, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. You are an overcomer. You are somebody who's born of God, who's got the capacity to be an overcomer. Somebody who triumphs over the circumstances, the challenges, the difficulties of life. They don't have to put you down. You can overcome. You can triumph over the difficulties, the challenges that you and I, that you face in life. You are born to win. You are born to overcome. However, he continues in verse 4 and he gives us the key in 1 John 5 verse 4. He says, whoever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. One version says, this is how we have victory over the world. It is through our faith. So he's given us the key. He said, you are an overcomer. You are going to win. You will face challenges. You will face difficulties. But God, because you're born of God, you are an overcomer. You have the potential to live a victorious life, to overcome life. And here's the key. This is how we gain victory over the world. It's through our faith. Amen. That's why it's so important for you and I as believers to learn how to live by faith and walk by faith because it is through faith that we are going to overcome and triumph over the challenges and difficulties of life. Amen. Now, Jesus modeled this for us. He said, I have overcome the world. He modeled what it means to live the overcoming life. To live a life that triumphs over the tribulations, the challenges, the difficulties, the storms. He modeled that for us and he taught that to us. So let's go to one, one scenario in the, in the New Testament. So please go with me to the 8th chapter of Luke. Where Jesus models for us faith that dominates the circumstances. Of course, we can look at the entire life of Jesus and learn lessons from every situation and scenario. But we're just speaking one this morning in the 8th chapter of Luke. And uh, let's see how Jesus models this faith that dominates circumstances. In Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to verse 25, we're just going to read this passage here. It says, it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat and with his disciples, and he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake, and they launched out. So Jesus had a destination. He said, let's get on to the other side. We're going to the other side. We've got a place to go to. There's a destination. This is not an aimless journey. We're going somewhere. Let us go over to the other side. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling the and were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Well, just one scenario where Jesus models to us faith that dominates circumstances. And the Bible says, This is how you and I are going to have victory over the world. It's through our faith. So Jesus says, let's go over to the other side. We're, there's a plan. There's a purpose. There's a destination. We're going. And he goes to sleep. Now, you know, if you and I would kind of just stretch our imagination a little bit, here's what we would have assumed. This is the Son of God. He is in the center 
of the will of God for his life. It is impossible that there should be any storm that would come against him. He's the son of God. He's in the center of the will of God for his life. So therefore, everything must be calm. He's the son of God. The father would have given angels charge over him and every angel was an assignment to keep every wind still and every wave you know, calm and make sure that he has a very peaceful journey to the other side. That's what we would have assumed. After all, he was the son of God. But not so. Because we see, storm came. The winds blew and the storms arose and this was the ship in which the Son of God was traveling. A lesson for us to learn. Just because you're in the center of the will of God, just because you are doing what God wants you to do, and just because you're going where God wants you to go, does not exempt you from the storms of life. Amen? doesn't exempt you. It doesn't exempt me from the storms of life. Just because we're in the center of the will of God. Just because we are born of God does not mean there will be no tribulations. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulations. But what I want us to see is, Jesus modeled for us what to do when the storms of life come. You and I have one of two choices. We can do what Jesus modeled for us in Luke the 8th chapter, or we could just relinquish our faith and say, Whatever will be, will be Titanic, I follow you. But let's look at what Jesus did. When these winds came, the storms blew, and, and the disciples, you know, they couldn't figure out what to do. They woke Jesus up and said, Lord, you know, we're about to die. I mean, this is, this is like Titanic in advance. Lord, come on, do something. What did Jesus do? He didn't stand up and say, Oh, Heavenly Father, maybe it's your heavenly will. For this storm to take me to a watery grave. I'm ready, Lord. He didn't do any of that. He had a purpose very clear. We're going to the other side. We're going to the other side. I will not accept any storm. I will not allow any storm to send me prematurely to the grave. I will not accept any storm that wants to rob me of my destiny. He stood up. He spoke to the winds and the waves and said, Peace be still. And we see him turn around to his disciples and ask them, Where is your faith? In, in a way of rebuking them, saying, Listen, this is what I would want you to do with your faith. Where is your faith? Meaning, you should have stood up and dominated this with your faith. Amen. Unfortunately, most Christians relinquish their faith, relinquish their position of dominating their circumstances and then blame it on God. And say, because God sent a storm in my life, I went down to the grave. My future was canceled. I lost the purpose of God. I just met God prematurely. And then, you know, God says, how come you're here so early? In heaven, I mean. <laughs> then he said, God, but you sent the storm. He said, no, I didn't send the storm. I wanted you to go to the other side. So we conveniently create a theology that will blame it on God. But that's not what Jesus modeled. He said, when the storm comes, here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand up with your faith and with your faith be the overcomer. Get on to the other side. Go to your destiny in God. Don't let any storm of life rob you of what God designed you to be and become here on earth. The choice is yours. I want to encourage all of us this morning, listen. You've been born to overcome. You're born to overcome the world. In the world, there is tribulation. There will be the storms of life. There will be the dark, darkness of life. There will be the challenges of life. There will be the mountains. But God's given you something. He said, by faith, you will overcome. 
this is the victory that overcomes the world. It is our faith. Absolutely essential for us to learn to live and operate by faith rather than by our intelligence and then in our intelligent mind blame God for the storms of life. That's what most believers do. That's not what Jesus modeled. He said, rise up, dominate the storms with your faith. Amen. So now picture this. Jesus had his 12 disciples. He's got three years, three and a half years with them. He needs to train them. He needs to equip them because they are the ones who are going to continue his ministry after he goes back to heaven. And he is using every opportunity to teach them very important things. And he's teaching them about faith. So here's one scenario where he's teaching them. He's modeling to them what it means to operate by faith. What it means to dominate storms by faith. What it means to go to your destiny, go into your destination, even though there may be some obstacles. He's modeling that to them. But there are also other situations where he teaches that to them on purpose. And Mark chapter 11 is one of those situations. So let's go to Mark chapter 11. The gospel of Mark chapter 11. Where Jesus on purpose teaches them a lesson about faith in God. In Mark chapter 11, we're just going to pick up the scenario there by reading a few verses. In Mark chapter 11, uh, we'll read... Verse 11 onwards, it says, When Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple, so when he looked around at all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see it, if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. And then he proceeded into Jerusalem. Verse 19. When evening had come, he went out of the city. Verse 20, it was the next morning. Now in the morning, as he passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered to him, answered to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and there's not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, what things, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So Jesus is continuing his teaching, his disciples, the lessons on faith. And here is one situation that he actually sets up for them. He kind of approaches a fig tree, so you know, the disciples are thinking, okay, maybe he's going to the fig tree, he's hungry, we're all feeling hungry, maybe he's going to the fig tree to find some fruit, and so they see him coming there. But I think it's a little beyond just finding fruit. He's setting them up for the lesson he wants to teach them. So he comes to the fig tree here, there's nothing on it, he knows there's nothing going to be on it, because it's not the season for figs. All his disciples are around him wondering what the Lord's going to do. And they hear him curse the fig tree. They, he, they hear him say, Nobody is going to eat anything of you from now on. And you can just imagine Peter, James, John, just looking at a fig tree. Like, what's going to happen to this now? And I think, apparently nothing happens at that moment. Because they just proceed on into Jerusalem. And then over there in Jerusalem, Jesus is chasing out all the people from the temple. Peter saying, man, this is a bad day for us. He's cursing the fig tree, chasing these people out of the temple. Something's wrong here. And anyway, at the end of the day, they go back to Bethany, just spend the night there, sleep. And next morning, they're back on that same track, passing by the same tree. And this time, Peter notices that this tree has been dried up from the roots. 
It's withered. It's just like Jesus said there yesterday. It's right up. And so he calls uh, the attention of everybody and says, Hey guys, look. Master, look. The tree that you cursed yesterday indeed has withered up. It's all gone. It's dry from the roots. And Jesus set this entire thing up to teach them some lessons on faith. And he proceeds in to teaching them what he wants them to learn about faith. He begins by saying in verse 22, Have faith in God. Fig tree, he spoke to it. I'm sure that night, the disciples may have been wondering, do we really want to follow this man? We see him talking to trees. We see him talking to winds and waves. I mean, do you think he's in the right mind? Do we really want to follow a leader who talks to trees? But next day, they're learning something about faith. He says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. If Jesus was standing here and speaking to you and me, he would say these, the same thing. Have faith in God. You're in the middle of a storm. Have faith in God. Things are not going the way you want them to go. Have faith in God. You're facing the storms of life. Have faith in God. You're facing some mountains. Have faith in God. And then he proceeds to tell us how to operate that faith. How to use that faith. You have faith in this almighty God. Now here's what you do to operate, to exercise, to work your faith. Here's what you do. He taught his disciples. Verse 23. He said, listen guys. For verily I say unto you. Or the new King James. Assuredly I say to you. You know when Jesus verily, verily I say to you. Or assuredly. It's not like, you know, just another nice thing to do. He's saying this is truth. What I'm about to tell you is truth. Verily. Assuredly I tell you. I'm telling you a statement of absolute truth. And he says this. Whoever. Whoever means anyone. It includes you. Any person on earth. Whoever. Anyone can operate this. Anyone can do this. Whoever will say to the mountain. Be removed and be cast into the sea. And will not doubt in his heart. But believe that what he says will come to pass. He will have whatever he says. Just listen. This is how you operate your faith in God. What I did with the fig tree is just a demo of it. Just a demo. Just for you to understand this concept. But this is what I want you to learn. Have faith in God. And then I want you to speak your faith. If you will focus your faith on your mountain. Have faith in God. Focus your faith. On your mountain. What's your mountain? Your challenge, your problem, your difficulty. Focus your faith. And then speak to it. Speak your words of faith to it. He said you will have what you say. This is how you will make your faith in God affect the things here on earth. Are you with me? And I believe if Jesus was here this morning, he would teach us the same thing. He would tell you and me the same thing. Have faith in God. And if you have faith in God, he said, you speak to your mountain. Tell it to move. And don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you're saying will come to pass. He said, you will have what you say. Have faith in God. Amen. Speak to your mountain. Who can do this? Jesus said, whoever, anyone can do this. It doesn't matter your, what your age is, whether young or old, or big or small, whether you're very spiritual or whatever. If you have faith in God, you focus your faith on your circumstances, on your situation. Speak to it. In the 8th chapter of Luke, 
Jesus modeled this for them. He was there in the middle of a storm. He spoke to the storm. Peace be still. And what he spoke happened. In Mark chapter 11, he gave a little demo and then he explained it to them. He said, this is how you use your faith in God. Have faith in God. Speak to your mountain. Speak to the circumstances of your life. Amen. I want, to, I want all of us to understand that this is something each one of us can do in our lives. In the circumstances of our lives. In the challenges of our life. This is something we can do. And this is what we need to do to be the overcomers God has designed us to be. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is how we gain victory over the world. It's through our faith. How do you exercise faith to dominate and overcome and triumph over the world? It's like this. Have faith in God and speak to your circumstances. Don't let any storm rob you of your destiny in God. God wants you to get to the other side. God wants you to go to that which he has designed for your life. If a storm comes, if a mountain comes, speak to it. Dominate it with your faith in God. Amen. Don't be somebody who relinquishes their faith and just accepts the storm to drown them and push them and cancel out what God had ordained for their lives. Because then it's not God's fault. He has declared you to be an overcomer and he has given you the faith in your heart for you to dominate your circumstance. And he has said you will go to the other side. Amen. An analogy that's been in my heart in recent days is that of a diamond. The diamond is one of the toughest materials known. It's stronger than most other materials it used to cut all kinds of things and so on. The word, the, the word diamond in the Greek means things like indestructible. And I like one meaning of it. It says, uh, I overcome. It's the meaning of the word diamond. For a diamond to be formed, now we're talking about natural diamonds, not the artificial ones you make. But the natural diamond, for it to be formed, there are two important things. High temperature and high pressure. And it's formed deep in the lower parts of the earth, about 100, 120 kilometers down in the, into the earth, the depths of the earth. The carbon atoms under the high temperature, high pressure come into a certain formation that causes them to be these, uh, these kinds of stones, diamonds. And here's how I was relating it to my own life and to the situations of my life. You know, when there is high temperature around me and things are really hot and things are really intense and really difficult, I shouldn't allow them to break me. I shouldn't allow this high temperature to destroy me. Rather, I must bring in the pressure of faith so that from that circumstance can be born these diamonds that can sparkle for the glory of God. So the high temperature moments of life, I've decided I'm going to put in the pressure of faith and see God create some diamonds in my life that will sparkle the glory of God. Are you in a high temperature point in your life where the circumstances and the situations of life are, are just so hot? You said, God, I mean, it can't get worse than this. I want to challenge you. What's needed is some pressure. The pressure of your faith in God. Bring it in to bear on the circumstances of your life. And see God form some diamonds which can sparkle with the glory of God. And bring praise to God here on earth. 
Start putting the pressure of your faith on the circumstances of your life. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 11 that God completes our work of faith with his power. God completes our work of faith with his power. For by grace you are saved through faith. God extends grace. When your faith meets his grace, there's an explosion of God's power. Amen. God's all about grace. What he's asking you and me is saying, let me see some faith from your heart. When his abundant grace meets your faith, there is an explosion of power. Salvation happens. Miracles happen. All kinds of things happen. God completes our work of faith with his power. Would you, in your circumstance, in your situation, rise up with faith in your heart, in God? You're born to overcome, but this is how you overcome the world. It's by your faith. It's by your faith. Amen. Amen. Would you purpose in your heart that you will be somebody who follows the example of Jesus? That when the winds and the storms of life blow in against you, that you would not say, this is God doing it. But rather you would say, God has purpose for me to get to the other side. And I will not allow for anything in honor to rob me of my destiny in God. Would you rise up with that faith in your heart to be the overcomer God says you can be because whatever is born of him overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Jesus modeled for us how faith dominates. He taught us how faith dominates. Have faith in God. Speak to your situation. Speak to your circumstances. He said, you will have whatever you say. Will you bring the pressure of your faith to bear on your circumstances? Might be getting hot. But I think God's getting ready to form some diamonds in your life. He's just waiting for your faith to come in. To bear on that circumstance, to bear on that situation, and let some diamonds be formed in your life. Father, we just stand before you this morning and we thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that you've said that we are overcomers. Every person here is an overcomer. And we overcome by our faith in you. I pray that this morning that each one of us will be encouraged to have faith in God. In the middle of our most difficult circumstance and situation, that we will have faith in you. We'll rise up with faith in our hearts. And begin to speak to the storms. Begin to speak words of faith to our circumstances. Begin to speak words of faith to the mountains. So they can dominate our situations. The faith of God.